In this video, I will show you guys how to solve a high water linear differential equation such as this one. And here we are talking about third water situation because we have the third derivative right here, right? And the good thing right here is that all the coefficients are just constants. So we can do the things that we did for the second water linear differential equations with constant coefficients. What I mean by that is we can just go ahead and change this to its corresponding characteristic equations. And then we can go ahead and solve that and we'll be able to solve this differential equation. So right here, uh, y triple prime corresponds to r to the third power, and then y double prime corresponds to r squared, and this right here is minus 6r. And the original y has no r, so we just put it down plus 4, and this will be equal to 0. And now we have to solve this equation, but the tricky part is that this is a third degree equation, right? We have four terms, so usually we should just try to solve this by factoring, by grouping. However, if you factor out the first two terms to get r squared in the front, and then r plus 1, these two terms you can factor out 2, but then inside will be negative 3r plus 2. And we cannot factor out any more, any, anything anymore after that, right? So factor by grouping wouldn't work, and it's just not possible to factor it out uh, the usual way. So that's the hard part of this. It's how to solve for the r's, right? Hmm. But you have to keep in mind, this is just a homework question. What I mean by that is that this right here shall be fair enough. Okay, so this is how we can make this fair. Whenever we cannot really solve this by factoring with the usual method, we should be able to just guess and check an answer for r right here rather easily, okay? And all the good candidates for the r values is going to be looking at the uh, constant term, which we have 4. Think about the factors of 4. Namely, we have 1, 2, 4, right? And each of them can be plus or minus. So what we're going to do is we are going to check plus minus 1, plus minus 2, and plus minus 4 for the r values. As long as we can find one answer, everything will continue nicely, okay? So this is what I'm going to do first for you guys. I'm going to check, right? I'm going to check. Let me say I want to check r is equal to negative 1. Let's see what do we get from here. I'm going to plug in negative 1 to all the r's. So we have negative 1 to the third power plus negative 1 squared minus 6 times negative 1 and then add a 4 to that, do we end up with 0? Well, this is negative 1 plus 1, so far so good because that's 0, but this and that is positive 6 and then plus 4. This is 10 altogether on the left hand side, so this is not it. This is not it, right? So we have to make sure we cross this out r is not equal to negative 1, okay? Alright, don't give up. As long as you have the patience, everything will work out nicely. Now let's check r is equal to positive 1. Check the easy numbers, right? So 1, 2, 4, and uh, let me just use 1 right here for now. Anyways, uh, 1 into here, 1 to the third power plus 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus Four, do we get 0? This is 1 plus 1, and then minus 6 plus 4. That's 2. Minus 6 is negative 4. Plus 4 is, yes, 0. And then you see 0 is, of course, equal to 0, right? So if you didn't know, now we know. OK, you see, we found an r value. r is equal to 1. Because r is equal to 1, that means, OK, this is going to tell us that r minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial in r, all right? So what I mean by that is, you can look at this equation. The left-hand side, we can factor out an r minus 1, okay? And then we have another parenthesis right here for the second factor, and of course we make this equal to 0 still, like that. And now the question is, how can I figure out the second factor. Well, this is the original polynomial, right, in terms of r. If we factor it out, the r minus 1. To get this, we have to do either long division or what we call the synthetic division. Uh, you can check out the video in the description if you want to review any of that. But in this case, let me just work this out for the synthetic division, okay? And once again, to figure this out, what I have to do is take this, and let me just put this down right here which we have the 
r third power plus r square minus 6r plus 4. Okay, we take this and we divide this by r minus 1. Okay, and to do so, what I'm going to do is use the statistic division and you draw a left box like this. And you write down the coefficients, which is 1, 1, negative 6, 4, right? 1, 1, negative 6, 4. r to the third power, r squared, r, no r, so in that order. And the next move is that, look at this, this is r minus 1. Think about how we can make this equal to 0, real, r has to be positive 1, right? So you put down the positive 1 right here, okay? And now, this is how this is going to work. First of all, bring this downward, so that we have 1 right here, so we just write down the 1. And then, you take this, multiply with this, 1 times 1 is 1. You put down the result right here, so that's 1. 1 times 1 is 1, put it here. And then, for synthetic division, you're going to add them up. 1 plus 1 is 2, so that's what we have. And then you continue, 1 times 2 is 2, and you put it here. So we have 2 right here, negative 6, and 2 together, you add them up, right? And this is going to give you negative 4. At the end, you do, neg you, you do 1 times negative 4, put it here, which is negative 4. 4 and 4 together, it will give you 0. And you see, this is the remainder, okay? And because you know r minus 1 is a factor, the remainder at the end should always be 0 in this process. And this is how we are going to get the answer from here. Originally, we start with a third degree, right? So, r to the third power, r squared, r to the first, no r. Right here, this is where the answer is. The degree goes down by 1. So you have r squared here, r to the first, and then no r. So this is going to go into the second parentheses. We will have 1 r squared, so let me just put this down as r squared. And this is positive 2 r to the first power, so plus 2 r, and then minus 4, okay? So this is how you do it, and this is just a lot of algebra, right? All right, now, so technically, I will show you guys all the steps. You put this down as r minus 1 is equal to 0, so that means r is equal to 1. We solved it, no problem. We have to solve this right here. So I'll put this down as r squared plus 2r minus 4 equal to 0. This is much more doable because this is just a quadratic equation, right, in terms of r. Okay, it's not factorable anymore right here. Um, what you can do is either to complete the square or use the quadratic formula. Uh, I will use the quadratic formula for you guys. I think that's what you guys would prefer me to do as well, right? So let me just say r is going to be minus b, which is 2 right here, and then plus minus square root of b squared, which is 2 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, and then c, which is negative 4, so you just have to do this carefully, all over 2 times 1 for the a, right? That's what we have. And now, you will see this is just negative 2, and then we have the plus minus, and let me just keep the square root for now like this. Okay, 2 squared is 4, and then you see 4 times 1 is 4, times another 4 is 16, but you see the sign, negative times negative is positive. So, in another word, we are talking about 4 plus 16, that's going to be altogether 20, okay? And on the bottom here, we have 2 times 1, which is just a 2. Look at square root of 20, we can simplify that to be square root of 4 times square root of 5, right? Because 4 times 5 is 20, and then 4 is a perfect square. And square root of 4 is going to be a regular 2. So in another word, this is going to be negative 2 plus minus. This is just a regular 2 now, and then we have the square root of 5 all over 2, right? All right, of course, you can just factor out the 2 in, on the top, and this is negative 1 plus minus square root of 5, and then you see this 2 and that 2 will cancel. So all we are talking about is negative 1 plus minus square root of 5, okay? So from here, you are talking about r equals to 2 values, and both of them are real. Negative 1 plus square root of 5, and the other one is negative 1 minus square root of 5. And in our situation here, we have three real roots for the r, right? And here we have it. Let me just say y as a function of t. The building block, the first building block for the general solution for the y, it's going to be e to the rt. And r is 
one. Let me use the first one. It's one. So it's one T, which is just T. That's the first building block for the general solution. And then this is the second R, so I'll just put this down as E to this R, which I'll put on parentheses, negative one plus square root of five T, okay? And then the third one is going to be E to the negative one minus square root of five, and then T, like that, okay? So these three are the building blocks to the solution to that differential equation, and they are all linearly independent. And at the end of the day, you know the deal. I'm going to take this and then multiply by C1, and take this, multiply by C2, and then right here, we have the C3, and then add them up, right? Add them up at the end, and this right here will be it. This is the answer to the original differential equation. That's it.